Hey folks, it's John here coming to you from right outside of Washington DC and today we're going to be talking about how to throw the flick otherwise known as the forehand in Ultimate Frisbee. To throw our flick we're going to focus on three major components. Grip, our three whips, and our angle control. Let's get into it. In terms of a grip, the best way to do it is to make an L with two fingers forming the vertical line in the L and your thumb forming the horizontal line. You're going to put this on the disc like so, so that your two fingers underneath are just about grasping the edge and your thumb is pressing into the rings on top. The importance here in thinking about our thumb is that the flight rings were made to be malleable. And what that means is when we press in, we should be making a little bit of a dimple. Okay, so we're not crushing the disc, but a little bit of a dimple is going to help with our flick control a lot. After you've got your grip down, let's think about the three whips. So each part of our body that we use to throw the flick can be thought of as a whip or a mini flick in itself. The first is going to be our wrist, this motion. The second is going to be our arm and elbow, that motion. And the third is going to be our core, or the rest of our body, which can be thought of as this motion. So putting them all together, we're going to get something that looks like this. So let's talk about our three whips and their importances. The first whip is the most important one, and that is the wrist. The purpose of the wrist is to put spin on the disc so that it stays stable, not wobbly, and so that we can get enough touch on it to make it easy enough to catch. The most important exercise you can do to get your wrist motion going is when you're sitting in front of the TV or doing an activity, anything that doesn't take your hands. Just go back and forth with your wrist, switching grips, and then also keeping it in the flick grip and going back and forth like this. That way you can get your wrist flexible and strong for when we're throwing flicks on the field. Let's see, just using that first whip, no arm, no body. So as we can see here, the disc is coming out flat and with touch, but there's very little power behind the disc. And that's where the next two whips come in. For the arm whip, we're mostly thinking about intermediate power. So if you're trying to throw 20 to 40 yards downfield, the arm's going to be the most important power organ for our flick. So we're creating that potential energy by cocking the arm, not making it flat when we're starting to throw, and then we're flattening it out as we throw to get that 20 to 40 yard power. Let's take a look at it. The third and final whip is of course the rest of our body, specifically focusing on our core. Our body is going to whip around and really help us get to that 40 to 70 yard range or even farther if you're talking about some of the best throwers in the game. And so we're thinking about our wrist still, we're thinking about our arm still, but now we're working in the twist of our core, like we're uncorking a bottle, or I should say screwing off a bottle top. Also, some throwers like to work their leg motion in, just a little back and forth, or even just picking it up and putting it down. Can get a little bit more power on the throw. Now it's important when you're throwing long and using all three of your whips to not get lost in the amount of power you want to put behind the disc. So if we're thinking of it as Wii Golf, right? If anyone's ever played Wii Golf, there is a power range. And if you just swing wildly as hard as you can, it goes up in the power range all the way through the top and swings back and forth and your golf ball goes somewhere off the course, off the beaten track. And so we want to throw at about 80% of what we think we can to try to get the best results on our throw. Using all three whips, the wrist, the arm, and the core, and only throwing about 80% of what we think we can. The third and final key to throwing a flick in Ultimate Frisbee is angle control. Now angle doesn't as much come in when we're throwing 10 to 15 yards, even 20 yards. A nice flat sweeping it off the table angle is going to get you there, okay? 
But when we're throwing hucks or away shots or throws that we want to have three patterns of flight, and what I mean by that is starting out inside out, going to flat, and then finishing outside in for a nice flight path, we are going to want to really focus on the angle of that disc at the release. Essentially, the best way to think about this is the more power you're putting into your throw, the more of an inside out angle you want to start on. Now, the reason I say that is because the disc's natural tendency is to turn over outside in. So if I were to just throw this flat throw as hard as I could, as far as I could, it would turn over and hit the ground like that. The way to combat that and make sure that it's flattening out at the apex of its flight is by starting the disc inside out. Now, if I'm throwing as far as I possibly can into a big headwind, I might even start it even more inside out. But that's the angle and the power that you'll have to experiment as you're throwing farther and farther distances. Let's try it out. Here are a couple examples of throws without angle that start flat and turn over as their natural tendency. Did we see how those tailed off to the left? Now let's try a couple with some inside out angle on the release. It's all about playing with that mixture of angle and power to get best results. One note about throwing longer distances in addition to our throwing 80% of what you think your 100% can be is instead of starting your form and thinking about rounding a corner, we want to more think like we're sweeping whatever angle we're throwing it at off of a plank that extends right in front of us. Throwing is actually a lot more about a straight line motion than it is about a loop, even if you want the disc to go at more of a loopy pattern. Let's take a look at a couple full power reps while we're putting everything together. Our grip, our three whips, and our angle control. I'm throwing at 80% of what I think I can and sweeping it off of an imaginary plank in front of me. That's it for me today on how to throw a flick. If you have any questions or recommendations for other videos I should do, be sure to leave a comment. Until then, I hope that these tips help you improve your flick form and distance. Peace.